told my boss, hey, I, I got to go, man. I'm giving y'all 30 days notice, you know. And I was scared of the unknown, but I knew that God had me. Because it wasn't my decision. I wanted to leave. Because some folk will leave a job just because they don't want to be there. And God ain't say leave. And you're going to be out somewhere <laughs> doing some stuff you don't want to do. You know, I left because God said it's time to leave. He said, you work for me now. And if you work for me, don't worry about how much you're going to make. Just take care of the needs. And the Bible says, I will meet your needs. You know, and if you follow me, I can give you the desires of your heart. And so I lost money. And so what I had to do was I had to reduce my lifestyle. And as I reduced my lifestyle, I said, oh, I never had so much money in my checking account in all my life. And I used to work two and three jobs, and I, I went to some place I used to sell meats, meats door to door. And I tried to see a six-foot-four black man, 300-something pounds, knocking on a, 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 a rich, affluent, white neighborhood door, saying, I got some meats out here. Y'all want to come take a look? <laughs> you thought I was crazy. But they came out, and they looked, and they bought, and they bought plenty. Because every time I needed my needs to be met, what I was doing, I was doing free. The only reason why I left the government the first time to work on this meat truck is because my children were being born, and I wanted to spend time with my children. I didn't want them to go to daycare. You know, daycare costs money. Well, let me, let me help you out. <laughs> let me just help you out. Men, listen up. If you have the means to be home during the day and you got children, then your job is to take care of your children. Because if you take care of your children, you put the money back where? In the house. And now you ain't paying someone else to raise your children and they get mad when your children come back and say some stuff. Who, where'd you learn that? But we haven't controlled anything. We said, well, if it ain't mama, I ain't doing it. Well, no, I had to do what I had to do in order to live my life, to make sure my children were fine, and that I could start growing toward financial freedom. It may be the man. It may be the woman. When me and my wife prayed that we would, my son would have to go to the daycare, I didn't think it was going to be me. <laughs> I ain't want to change no diapers. And when he crying, I ain't trying to get up. He hung. I'm, I can remember, man, I'm in the bed asleep. He started crying. I'm like, man, how come she ain't got up yet? <laughs> she got to go to work. She's looking at me like, Ugh. and she get up and she go. The reality is we got to do our part. You know, we got to do our part to achieve financial freedom. Husbands and wives, you got to work together. You can't have one not spending the other one spending all over. Every time I turn around, I'm paying for what you done done. I said we're trying to go through this. I put my wife on spending restriction. Well, it's not just her. It's all, it's all of us. I say three to six months, no spending. Because I'm trying to knock this bill off, pay this thing down. You know, she ain't always happy with it. I ain't even. But it has to be done. The Bible says if you owe somebody, you are a slave to them. Jesus did not die on the cross for us to be a slave to anybody. He gave us a mindset to do the right thing. You know, everything that you earn, how many folk work, 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 work more than one job? It's rough, ain't it? Soon, like, soon as you come in, you back out the door again. And you're working. And then here's, 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 here's the kicker. You work double jobs and you make less money. Because the more you make, the more Uncle Sam take. I never forget, they said we had mandatory overtime. Every Saturday we was working. I don't like working on no Saturday. Especially when I stopped working two and three jobs. Yeah, I was, they said I was Jamaican at one time. <laughs> I had three and four jobs. I was driving everybody around. I said, man, when I ain't got to do this no more, I ain't doing this no more. So Saturday came, mandatory overtime. All right, I got to go work this mandatory. I said, all right, yes. That's a lot of money. So I go up in there and I work it. I work about almost 80 hours. I see that paycheck. I said, oh, heck no. I said, you mean to tell me 
you done took all my time on Saturday. And this is all I get? I went to the bar. I said, look, man, I can't work on Saturdays no more. He said, well, it's mandatory. I said, yeah, but I'm a preacher. <laughs> it's against my religious ethics. <laughs> I got to do my ministry on Saturday. I ain't got no other time for Saturday. They was like, uh, yeah, all right. So folks sitting there working, I'm like, I'll see y'all later. Because Saturday, I'm going to enjoy my day. Life is too short to be working all the time. Folks ain't been on vacation. Folks don't go out. They ain't been to dinner. They ain't got what they want. People ain't even made love in much. They too busy working. When they come home, they tired. They're like, you want more? You better get away from me. That's because you have no financial freedom. When you're financially free, oh, man, you can do whatever you want to do. When you bless the Lord, the Lord blesses you back. You know, he says, look, don't be sitting there and trying to run away from the brother that asked to borrow. Because see, if you're financially free and you know what you're supposed to be doing, you have income to be able to help somebody out. And please, don't, don't lend to somebody and ask when you're going to get it back. Because if you need to get it back, let me help you out. You can't lend it. And you can't lend it because you're not financially free. It's not that I don't want to help you. I don't have it because I owe everybody. You know, and now if I borrow from you and I owe you too, now I'm going to be ducking you when I see you. Talking about, here come Red. I may go around this way right here. Cause I owe him. I don't, don't want to pay nobody. Now, release your brothers and sisters. If you have it to give, then just give it. And let them know. It's just a gift from the Lord. Because I followed the plan. I'm financially free. I'm doing what I can to become successful. I'm doing what I can so that I don't have to worry about where my next meal is coming from. You know, and there were times when I had to eat oodles and noodles. I couldn't have the fancy stuff. I ain't had the money. I was paying off all the stuff that I, I bought that I didn't need. Take care of your bills. Take care of your responsibility. Train your child how to take care of their responsibilities. You know, my son, he can see, oh, he go using me again. You know, but he earns money based on his grades and his, his, his um, you know, allowance and stuff like that. And so when he comes to me and says, well, can I get this? I say, no. I gave you money. You earn, you, where, where the money you earn? He said, yeah, but I, I bought this. Okay. If you bought that, that's where you wanted to spend your money. You know, if you want to buy some $200 tennis shoes, and you only have $200 coming in every four months. Let me help you out. You can't buy $200 tennis shoes. If you do, you're going to be broke for the next four months. And I'm not crying because you spent your money on what you wanted to spend it on. See, what I'm saying is when you get that paycheck, you know how much you got coming in. You have to know this. I got this bill, this, this, this bill, this pay, and this is how much I have left. But if you buy stuff that you don't need, this is how much you have left. And then you have an emergency, right? You know what happens when you have an emergency. Reverend, I was just wondering, uh, you know, I, I, I need a little help now because I can't pay this here electric bill. You know I got to have power. I said, well, well uh, is your cell phone still working? Is cable still on? Uh, how's that steak you're eating right now? <laughs> and, and they would look at me as if I don't have the compassion. The word of God has all the compassion that we need. But we need to become responsible people of what he gives us. See, we can't bail you out every time you need something. If, if so, we ain't doing our job. The, the word of God is to teach them how to fish. It ain't say fish for them. We're not a bank. It's not a church bank. It's not Mount Moriah First National. We don't have that kind of stuff. We have to help when there is a need, when there is a problem, something, you know, arises out of nowhere, out the blue. Then we're there to help, but we're not a consistent chain where we can just keep on doing this and doing that. We have the resources. We have the income. And if you don't have enough, sometimes some of us can afford to lose a little bit. You know, back off of some of this stuff. That's life. What I'm trying to tell y'all 
is that the financial freedom is up to us. The jobs that we have work up to the best of our ability. The income that we have coming in, make sure it's allocated for where it has to go. And by goodness, don't leave God out. Because God can take nothing and make something. When you learn how to have faith, this whole walk is about faith. It's about trust. It's about hope. Lord, I'm going to have trust in you that you will meet my needs. And God said, I'm going to meet every one of your needs. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And so if I know that God is going to meet every one of my needs, then I'm going to have to start focusing on him first. If I focus on God first and start doing things in its proper order, when I pay off one bill, I don't say that's my money now. I attach that to another bill. So now I'm paying double on that, right? If I pay those two bills off, then I'm attaching it onto another bill. Then I'm paying three times as much on this because I'm going for financial security because when I get my paycheck at the end of the week, I want it to be whose? Mine. I want to have worked and have earned something and know this is mine. Take my family out to eat. Let's go on vacation. Let's do something because I've earned it and I've managed my money well and now I can do things without going into debt. If I can't pay something off in three months, I don't fool with it. Now, I got two credit cards, and they back up at crazy levels. Because I can't control gas. I have a credit card, American Express card. And y'all know I got a Cadillac Escalade. I have that Chevy Ta uh, Traverse. And I have a Honda Odyssey. And gas is crazy. But I know it's there. I have to pay it because I have to get around. So if I'm going to have to pay for gas, I got to cut some other things out. And I got to try to hit these bills as best I can. So what I do is I hit the biggest bill. Whatever has the highest interest, I hit that the hardest. Because that's the one that's really killing me. You know, and then once I get rid of that, I'll make sure I don't put nothing on that unless I can pay it off in that 30-day period. And then I begin to chip away at my stuff because that's a good steward of what God has given me. You know, I don't buy stuff that I don't need. I don't buy stuff that I cannot afford. You know, I will get it on the 18-month program. So I got my TVs, flat screen TV. I put it on that program, 18 months. I split it half in 17. You know, I, met, I put it in my little bank thing. Check goes off, no issue, because you don't have to worry about doubling that one up. Because ain't no interest being charged on it, so I ain't sweating it. And 17 months, it'll be paid off. I got my stuff, I'm enjoying it, and I ain't lose no money. I'm focusing on the stuff that's going to kill me and my interest, you know, and I'm trying to pay it off quickly. You say, man, am I getting this at church? That's the problem with our church folk now. We don't get enough of this kind of stuff. We don't get the sermon like last week. We don't get the stuff about our children. We don't get the stuff about marriage. We don't get the stuff because everybody thinks I'm supposed to sit back, hoop, holler, scream, yell, and get Jesus up. Well, let me just tell you this. If you're financially free, Jesus is already up. Because you are reading God's word. You are following the plan. You are doing what God has asked you to do. And when you do what God asks you to do, I can help you out. You don't have many issues. Because you're letting the, God, the Bible lead you. You know, so if you smoke too much, good time to stop. If you drink too much, the Bible says not to be giving too much wine. I know because I know for, you know, I, I've been in church for a long time. I know deacons that would tow up. I know pastors that would tow up. That's some private issues that they got to deal with. You know, some pastors get drunk because the members drive them to drink, they say. <laughs> some members bring them to alcohol. Here you go, Rev. <laughs> but that's not being financially sound. Because if you're spending on all these things, you can't help your brother and sister because you didn't spend it on other stuff. If you borrow, you know, be careful with that. Because when you borrow from something, you become, unless the person says, here, it's yours. You know, because I don't give me nothing that I got to give you back because there's a reason why I came to you. It's because I needed it, you know. And if I needed it and I, I to pay somebody, then if I add you to my list, then I owe more people than I started with. You follow me? As brothers and sisters in Christ, 
let's be responsible with what we have so that we can help our brothers and sisters out. You know, me and my wife, we help a lot of people out. My brothers, the churches help folks out. You know, people always say, I don't pay you back. I said, I don't ask you to pay me back. I said, whatever you do, whenever you get some money, throw in the missions. You ain't got to pay the church back. You ain't got to pay me back. Throw it in the mission. Now, now, let me tell you what I will do, though. Some people need to learn a lesson. So, if I think you one of those kind, I may give you something, and then you become a slave to me. Because now I'm your lender. Because I got to teach you how to still pay for what you bought. So you can't, you can't be a crutch either. You have to be able to figure out what situation is the right situation. Those who you know you can give, you give to. But those who you give to out of, a, out of a need, out of necessity, out of an emergency, that's fine. But there are folks who have an issue and you got to teach them. You can't just give them because they can say, oh, I can go back over here. No, this well ain't open like that. You got to begin to teach. So you got to know. So all these things will help us create the financial freedom that we need to be successful. And as long as we're successful, guess what? Our children will be successful. Those around us will be successful. And everybody else will be financially free. Can you imagine walking into a place where everybody's financially free? You're talking about folks singing and shouting. They were singing and shouting because they slept the last night. They slept the night before. You know, when you go to bed, you hit the bed and be <sighs> So how do you sleep so well? I'm financially free. <laughs> it's not about the money either, y'all. People with plenty of money have taken their lives. So it's not about the money. It's about being free in your life. It's about being free following God. It's about being able to free to do whatever it is that you want to do that God allows you to do within reason to help you keep the kingdom moving forward. That's what it's about. It ain't about how much you make. Because the brokest person can be the richest person. And the richest person can be the brokest person. So don't get it twisted. I ain't just talking about how much money you make. I'm saying that learn how to appreciate what you have because Christ died for us. He gave his bet. We were in debt to him. We are now a slave to him, but I'd rather be a slave to him than be a slave to the financial institutions because I know he has my best at interest. So therefore, I am a servant of God. I'm an indentured servant. So my the stuff that I do is because of the love of I have for Christ. I'm not made to do these things. I do them because I love the Lord. I follow the scriptures because I love the Lord. I lend to my brothers and sisters because I love the Lord. I'm financially free because I love the Lord. I don't need it back because I love the Lord. Because I know that if I give it to you, the Lord will take care of me on another side. When I, when I became the pastor and I left my job, I've never looked back. I'm coming up on 10 years next year. I've never looked back, and I've never had more money than I've ever had in my life, and I've made less. I learned how to manage what God gave me. If you learn how to manage what God gives you, you can be financially free. One step at a time. You ain't going to be financially free overnight because you didn't get in debt overnight. You come to Christ, you get saved, you think everything going to be changed? No. It's a process. And if you begin to follow the process, you begin to see light at the end of the tunnel. As long as you see that light, keep moving toward it. Because Christ died for us. I'm going to be doing some series because training is in session. I'm going to keep hitting it and hitting it until we begin to get it because it depends. Our lives depend on what we do day after day as it relates to God's word and the people around us. So if you enjoy in training session, come on back next Sunday. I got some more for you. Amen? Amen. Doors of the church open this morning.